CJ Gardner-Johnson delivered such a hard hit on this play that it resulted in a tear or a laceration to one of his kidneys. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and if you're new here and you enjoy learning about the underlying anatomy and mechanisms of different sports injuries, then please consider subscribing because it helps support the channel and that way you're up to date with future videos. Kidney lacerations often present just like this. Basically, the player is initially questionable, it presents more like a rib injury or just a contusion or bruise, but then we find out later on that there was actually more damage underneath everything, such as a laceration or a tear to the kidney. Here we can see CJ Gardner Johnson down here, number 23, comes in to deliver this hit, and there's nothing abnormal or unusual about the hit in and of itself. We see this countless times a game, but this particular one resulted in a significant enough blow to, I believe, the left side of his body here that enough energy was transferred through the rib cage <clears throat> into the kidney and caused the kidney tissue to actually tear and then bleed. One clue right away is he tried to get up. Of course, this requires you to contract your abdominal muscles, your obliques. This is gonna increase your intra-abdominal or intrathoracic pressure. And we can see he was unable to and had immediate pain. So this was a response looking back that does suggest more of a significant underlying injury. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, let's talk about the different intra-abdominal organs that we worry about with pathology or injury to especially the ribs. So the muscle that sort of sits below the rib cage and helps with breathing is called the diaphragm. If we look just beneath the diaphragm on the right upper side, we're going to have the liver. Of course, we know now this is not a liver injury, so we can go ahead and hide and get rid of that. Then on the left upper quadrant, tucked way back up again underneath that diaphragm, but a little bit more on the back side of the abdominal cavity is going to be the spleen. Based on where Johnson was grabbing and this presumably being what looks like a left-sided injury, trauma to the spleen would be just as likely to watch for as injury to the kidney. You can see how close in proximity they sit to one another. But of course we know it's not the spleen, so let's get rid of that. Now, of course, we have our two kidneys. There's a left-sided kidney and a right-sided kidney. The kidneys are important to help filter our blood and then produce urine, which goes on to the bladder. What I want you to notice is how the kidneys sit really, really close up against the lower portion of the rib cage. Of course, the rib cage is there to protect these organs, but they sit in so close of proximity that if you imagine a big impact or a blow coming into these lower ribs, from just the energy transfer alone, or if you have a rib actually break, that energy, that rib fracture can extend deeper and actually cause a bruise or bleeding to the kidney beneath it. You don't always have to have an actual rib fracture that like pokes into the kidney. You can just have enough energy that gets transferred from outside the body in through the ribs and impacts into the kidney that that sheer wave basically causes the tissue of the kidney to tear. And when it tears, you get a bleed or a cut, a laceration. With our triple box here, we can see again our anatomy and visualize where that kidney is sitting with Gardner Johnson as he comes in to make this tackle. As soon as that impact from the Packers player comes in, you can already see how there's some deformation of his upper rib cage. That energy is going to continue to transfer somewhere and eventually it ends up going into the kidney causing the tissue of the kidney to tear. There's five different types of kidney injuries based on where the bleeding occurs and how extensive it is. Because the kidney is filtering out our blood, it naturally is going to have a very, very high blood supply. So of course, cuts or lacerations through the kidney will result in potentially high levels of bleeding. A grade one kidney injury is going to be just some contusion or bruising below the capsule, basically this fibrous lining that goes around the entirety of the kidney but there's no real cut or tear through the tissue. A grade two injury now involves an actual cut. It extends from the outer portion of the kidney inward, but doesn't involve what we call the collecting ducts, basically the part of the kidneys that are collecting the filtrate to ultimately go on into urine. And it's also a very shallow depth, less than usually a centimeter. A grade three is a laceration that now is greater than a centimeter and still doesn't include that collecting duct system. Grade four does extend to involve the collecting duct and is a more serious injury. And then grade five is basically a shattered kidney where things are essentially in pieces. Grade one, two, and three are typically managed without surgery. You just follow different lab values to look at kidney function and if there's any blood in the urine, things like CT scans to look at cross-sectional imaging to see how much blood is collecting. And then grade four and five are more when we're talking about surgery because of how extensively damaged the kidney is. CJ can definitely return this season. Kidney lacerations are usually somewhere on the order of like two to six weeks, depending on how quickly the laboratory testing returns to normal and just where we are between that grade one, two, and three. If this is just a small little grade one, then I would expect it to be on the quicker side. But if this is more like a grade three, then I would think more at that 
more than a month time period. Once his vital signs are stable, his laboratory testing returns to normal, and he's able to get his conditioning back up, we should see him back out there on the field with no long-term repercussions. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, I'll see you later.